This is the island nation of Sri Lanka. And this is Colombo, the capital of that country. And in the heart of this city lies a small suburb officially known as the Company Street by the Brits, or as Company Vekia by the Dutch and the current government. Today it is a bustling commercial area with upscale hotels and shopping malls, but to its city dwellers it is known as Slave Island. Only most of them don't exactly know where and how that name came to be. And yes, today it is no longer an island. We all are very aware of the transatlantic slave trade and its consequences. Throughout the years, there has been much historical research, social movements, great movies and many depictions that covered the forced migrations of between 12 and 15 million people from Africa to the Western Hemisphere. And yes, I know what you're wondering. If you read the title, it was not fully clickbait, kinda? But you see, we hardly hear about the slave trade that occurred in the Indian Ocean Basin in the same period of time. And we hardly hear about the trading of so-called coloured slaves. And frankly, that's because this area of research is at its early stages and there is ongoing movement by many historians to give a voice to these silent segments of slaves. So this small video is about a small sliver of that story now being uncovered. Prior to the abolition of slavery in 1843 in the United Kingdom, Colombo had a great population of slaves. Yes, although Britain passed the Slavery Abolition Act in 1833 around Sri Lanka or Ceylon as it was called back then, they had some clear problems doing that until a decade later. You see, the Portuguese who ruled from 1517 before the Dutch had great trouble cultivating and transforming the land around these fortifications in the city due to constant wars with the natives. And let's say Portuguese did what was prudent and sourced to bonded slaves which they brought or bought from the colony of Mozambique. When the Dutch East India Company ousted them in 1656, the Dutchmen stuck to the Portuguese solution and imported slaves to Colombo which worked well within their policy of not enslaving indigenous subjects of the company territories. Now, the slave island, for a lack of a better term, has an interesting story behind it. Let's turn to this colonial writer Alan Walters, who in his book Palms and Pearls or Scenes in Ceylon describes how this island got its name. One night, in the old slave times before the year of 1844, the Kafir slaves in a certain house in the fort, in consequences of cruel treatment, rose and murdered a whole family. Thenceforth, the slaves were every evening put into ponds at sunset and roved to what was then an island, where they were kept under safeguard until the morning. The Dutchmen after this incident, fearing for their lives that a Kafir slave might knife them to death in the dead of night, confined their slaves to an area called Kafir Sefelt and infested the surrounding lake with crocodiles and installed a huge gibbet to remind the slaves of what will become of them if they attempted to escape. Now, most of the stories about slavery in Colombo are most likely lost. This is not very surprising. For most, there has never been any civil movement such as we come to see in the Americas for the emancipation of slaves. And of course, the only records that exist today are criminal records of different slaves which are always written from the perspective of their masters, accusing and dehumanizing the subjects. And almost all would remain nameless in these annals. However, we do know that the bonded slaves in Colombo had a much different life to that compared to say those in the Cape or the Caribbean. A segment of slaves was even provided a promise of freedom after one year of faithful service. This was unusual for the time, to say the least and the Dutch would come to regret it later when they will face severe slave shortages. As much as 10,000 slaves were put to work by 1661 and slaves constituted more than half of the population in Colombo, clearly depicting the dependency of Colombo on slave labor. This high proportion could be compared to the situation in 18th century Cape or South Carolina. Colombo would also serve as a hub for the officers in Batavia, today Jakarta, to host their slave trade under the noses of the VOC. There are accounts of these officers forcefully hijacking and enslaving whole passenger vessels as slaves. Now, unlike the Portuguese who sorted to supply from the East African coast, the Dutch in Ceylon, mostly, did not import slaves from the African circuit. Although the details are notoriously blurry and controversial, we now have evidence showing that these slaves were sourced from the areas of India such as Malabar, Coromandel and Bengal coast and from Southeast Asian origins encompassing Malaysia, Indonesia, New Guinea and Southern Philippines. While Southeast Asian slave making is similar to that of the so-called African circuit, which is usually by force, the bouts of the South Asian slave making is quite different, as they were usually the products of hard times. 
individuals either sold themselves or family members into slavery in times of famine or strife. Around 1660 saw a boom in the trading of slaves in the region, with tens of thousands of slaves being shipped to and from Colombo, mostly coming from South India. By the turn of the decade, this easy supply of voluntary bondage had dried up and the VOC would soar to traditional supplies of enslavement such as slave raiding and debt bondage in Indonesia. Eastern Indonesia replaced South Asia as the main source of slaves for Batavia, which also made more sense logistically as Colombo was much further to the new Batavian hub. Also, the much more lucrative trades in the transatlantic route placed increasingly less significance on Colombo, which no longer showed much promise to the VOC investors. Finally, the British takeover of Ceylon marked the slow demise of the slave trade in Colombo, and after the passage of time, the slave metamorphosized into coolies and then to the status of migrant laborers and onto indentured laborers. Now, if you ever visit this beach going nation, and I think you should, now you will know why this piece of their capital is discreetly called as Slave Island. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to know about some other cookie bit of knowledge, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell button. Oh, and I'd love to know about some specific topics you want me to cover on the channel and what to improve on my upcoming videos. I'll see you next time.